DHI Sanskrit, D this Sanskrit word means understanding, reflection, religious thought, mind, design, intelligence, opinion, meditation, imagination, notion, intellect. This word is directly connected with the word vak Sanskrit, vaka meaning speech, derived from vak Sanskrit, vaka meaning to speak. DHI is the voiced vak or speech, it is the thought mind or intellect. DHI also means to hold or to place, and indicates the activity of the intellect. Topic. Overview The natural meaning of DHI is thought which corresponds to the Sanskrit word buddhi which means the activity of mind, thought, understanding, and intelligence. Vedic Sanskrit employs two words DHI and Brahman for prayerful or meditative contemplation in which context DHI means visionary insight, intense thought and reflection, and the word Brahman is derived from the root BRH, meaning to grow, to expand. Manu Smriti describes ten essential rules for observance of Dharma the path of righteousness or the law of being, which binds the people of this world and the whole creation driti, patience, kashama forgiveness, dhamma self-control, astya honesty, shach purity, Indriya nigra control of senses dhi reasoning vidya knowledge and learning satya truthfulness and akroda control of anger topic <laughs> application dhi the prefix of dimahi and dio occurring in the gayatri mantra rig vedai.62.10 refers to understanding and its cognate word buddhi means reasoning faculty of the mind which understanding must be transcended to experience the ultimate reality the word dira meaning calm denotes the seeker whose intellect is saturated in knowledge which word is the combination of dhi meaning intellect and ra meaning fire or wisdom the non-atman i.e. the anatman, which is by its nature disagreeable, is the object of the function of dhi equals buddy, which reveals the joy ananda, the nature of the individual consciousness. Patanjali defines yoga as neutralization of the alternating waves in consciousness. In the phrase Sita Vritti Naroda Yoga Sutra I.2, Sita refers to the thinking principle and includes pranic life forces, tamanas mind or sense consciousness, ahamkara egoity and buddy intuitive intelligence, and vritti refers to the waves of thought and emotion that ceaselessly arise and Naroda refers to neutralization, cessation, or control. The root budh and its derivatives appear in the Vedas in the sense of kindling or awakening. The word buddhi appears for the first time in Samkhyana Brahmana Upanishad. Dhi is derived from driti and its cognate didhiti. It also refers to flash of intuition which is beyond all purely sensuous perception. The mental organs are manas mind and hrd heart and the mental faculties are sata thought dhi mental vision and kratu mental power manas is said to perform the processes indicated by the verbal roots cit dhi and man dhi requires kratu in actualizing visions topic <laughs> connection with vak DHI refers to vision or inspiration which is the exceptional faculty of acquiring a sudden knowledge of transcendent truth or reality, the inner light of visionary insight. Soma is the lord of vision who dispenses inspiration and speech vak is inspired thought manisa or wisdom guarded by the seers on the seat of RTA. The Rig Veda links language not only to thought manas but also to vision DHI, a word from which comes dhyana meaning meditation. In the Yajurveda 29, 8. Sarasvati, the goddess of speech, is invoked to grant the gift of dhi, inspired thought, and thought is linked with vak. Sarasvati is also known as the river of inspired thought. The Vedas are the sacred texts of the Hindus. They are the repository of what is the known or required to be known, in other words, the true knowledge or the transcendent eternal wisdom articulated in sound sabda or speech. Vak. The Vedic seers have associated the power of speech or the spoken word with ultimacy and transcendence. Ekam Sat Rig Veda I 164.46. They also know Vishvakarma, the creator, as Vikaspati, the lord of speech, Rig Veda X 81.7, who is also called Brihaspati and Brahmanaspati, and that vak or speech or utterance as Brahman is the creative principle and the absolute force in the universe. The person who has gained its knowledge is said to have attained the highest knowledge. Rig Veda X 125.5. As far as Brahman extends so far does Vak Rig Veda X 114.8 Topic <inaudible> <inaudible> Role of Vak 
The inspired thought DHI that precedes utterance though connected with speech undergoes some modifications while being transformed into speech. The Vedic rishis tell us that the thoughtful ones produce speech with their mind. Rig Veda X 71.2. The different stages in transformation from DHI to VAK are described in the Atharvaveda 7.1.1. DHI is the voiced speech. Goddess Saraswati presides over speech but Vak extends far above and beyond Saraswati Rig Veda by beyond all known spheres Rig Veda X Vak is dependent on breath or air, and the Aitareya Brahmana IV .1 states Brahman Vi Vak, Vak is the mother of the Vedas and the Vedas themselves Shatapatha Brahmana 6.5.3.4. The Vedas are a form of the ritual and cosmological Vak speech. Vak is presented as consort of Prajapati Kathaka Samhita 12.5.27.1 whom the Brahmanas express as the expressed Nirukta and as the unexpressed Anurukta, the limited and the unlimited. Taittiriya Aranyaka tells us that Vak is the imperishable one, the Aksara, the first born of the cosmic order RTA, the mother of the Vedas Mata, the navel of immortality Amrita, and therefore Vedas themselves are infinite Ananta, immortal AMRTA, and imperishable Akshita. The Jaimaniya Upanishad tells us that Aum or Om, the essence of all essences, is Vak. On the human plane the mind precedes speech, and on the cosmic plane Prajapati precedes Vak as the lord of thought and speech, who brings forth Vak to unite with Vak to manifest creation. Vak was probably the language commonly spoken by the Vedic people as the language of men. Vak is another name for Aditi or Viraj, for the purpose of invoking Agni and other Devadas. The mantras of the Rig Veda have a very essential role to play because the Upasaka when meditating is required to think of the RCs as Vak i.e. speech. It is for this reason that the mantras are chanted and there is a prescribed way to do that chanting. Rishi Meditithi Kanva Rig Veda I prays Sa na satvana abhara gayatrina navayasa rayam varvadimasam May Agni accept the words of praise adoration set in newer hymns composed in Gayatri meter and devoutly sung chanted, May Agni accept the ablations made in it in the prescribed manner of the offerings rightly earned and belonging to the performers of rites. And, Rishi Ayasya Rig Veda X. praying thus, Pariskirtasa Indevo Yoseva Pitriyavati Vayam Soma Asurksata informs us that having acquired the knowledge of the highest the learned people easily unravel the deeply hidden meaning of the most subtle kind. This means, that each experience of ours is a rediscovery of ourselves, and that in order to really rediscover ourselves so as to understand our true nature we have to firstly awaken our mind, then make the mind speak loudly enough to be heard because prana, which is the body of the mind, is that very silence waiting to be heard. A sage of the Rig Veda, Rig Veda X states that the Creator vested Agni with three colored flames and made it brilliant, eminent, swift acting and hot. The sage of the Chandogya Upanishad tells us that behind all things are these three colors, the rest constituted out of them are a modification and a name. Speech is RK or Burhati identified with Prana whose lord is Brihaspati, the same lord is Brahmanaspati when speech is Yajus associated with Brahman. Speech is Sama, it cannot reveal itself for it is as formless as the air on which it rides, it rides upon the streams of air constituting the wind, and words once uttered do not return to the speaker. Yajnavakya tells King Janaka that the light that comes nearest to the supreme light of the Atman is the light of Vak i.e. speech, since it is the supreme faculty of reason that finally lifts the consciousness towards the pure self-shining awareness of the Atman, and which after serving as a pointer vanishes or goes to rest. The Vedic sages have all along advocated truth, penance and study as special virtues. Amongst these three special virtues truth is held out to be the supreme virtue to be practiced by all aspirants. All primary virtues are firstly imbibed from the parents, Satyakama Jabala acquired the spirit of truthfulness from his mother, and Sanat Kumara taught Narada that truth has to be sought for realization when one indeed understands truth in its reality one speaks the truth, while describing the rituals associated with the Ashvamedha Yajna, in the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad we are told that the neighing of the horse, representing the cosmos, is vak. 
Topic claim for primacy A sage of the Chandogya Upanishad after declaring that the syllable AUM, having the individual and also the cosmic efficacy, not only serves to help the meditation of the individual person but even the sun travels the universe singing AUM as does prana moving in the body ch. Up, I. 5 .1, 3, explains that that AUM is the essence of all beings on this earth, the essence of a person is speech and the essence of speech is the Rig Veda ch. Up, I. 1 .2, but the essence of Samadhi Veda, which is the essence of the Rig Veda, is Ujjitha which is Aum. He declares that all speech is interwoven on the symbol Aum, in the same manner as the leaves of a tree are woven together on a stalk ch. Up, 2 .2 Speech is the fuel of fire which is man ch. Up, v. Mind consists of food, the prana consists of water, and speech consists of fire. Ch. Up. V. 6.5. Narada is told by Sanat Kumara that all this is but a name by which one knows. Even then, speech is greater than name because if there is no speech, neither righteousness nor unrighteousness would be known. But surely the mind is greater than speech, for mind is the entire world. Ch. Up. 7.2 and 3. Establishing the claim of the mind. Dhi. For primacy over speech. Vac. References <laughs>